Hello everyone and welcome to week 35 of the Gran Turismo weekly race guide here in 2021. And this one is it's a pretty filthy week, I've got to be honest. You're going to see some absolutely horrendous driving this week, which might actually be the most entertaining part of this video. Who knows? Uh, but you will see it and uh, yeah, let's get on with the action. So we're here at Majore Center, one of the rarest tracks ever used by Gran Turismo. It's why it's in Mialtomania. However, they're using it now. They are following what we did in the stats, I think. Who knows? But uh, let's have a look at the race details then. We're racing seven laps here at Majore Center. It's a grid start and we're on sports hard tires. I didn't explain the car, which is the KTM Crossbow. You can see that in the background. Very slippery car. Very hard car to fully control, if I'm honest. And that does mean carnage. And this race is no exception. Let's jump to it now and let's find out exactly what happened. Here we are at the start then. And I think a few people remembered. There we go. Thank you, Svetlio. Thank you to anyone who's flashing. Flash away. It's legal here. You can do it. Have some fun with your lights. We're doing nothing else as we sit there. As I always do. Put my brakes on. Flash the lights. Let's get ready to rumble. Trash control on one then. And it does get wheel spin in second gear as well. However, I turn it off just before I change. And you can still just about see that wheel spin as we head towards turn one. You might have just saw my brake balance there. Uh, I'm going to put the brake balance graphic on the screen somewhere, hopefully, uh, that you will see in a second. Uh, but going through here then, you can see how tight it gets very quickly. And uh, people looking to outbreak each other there. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to stay on the inside and play it safe, really. Unfortunately, Quinton's gone to the back. Uh, that driver to my left just got a bit of oversteer. So yeah, we lost out there as well because of that. Uh, and I noticed the Italian Sampe, uh they lose the uh, rear quite a lot here. So you just have to be careful. We do have a good race here with the Italian at least as Quinton comes through there. Takes advantage that I had to lift off there. It towards the last corner and just back out of this completely. I don't really want to go for it. What I'm planning on doing is this old point and squirt sort of thing. Piggy 18 there. Uh, but basically, because this car's a bit oversteery, if I can point it and just go foot to the floor, I should be golden. Right, lap guide time. I'm going to head towards turn one then. I right, see these brake markers above you. Look for the 100 meter board. Nice and easy. We're not using a blue, white, blue, no, it's not white. It's blue van professional person. Oh, we're just using a 100 meter board today as we look around the outside of the Italian. We do get that start. It's a bit later, but we will lift off the brakes, but they come back beautifully here. Uh, for this right-hander, it's the edge of the white there. But obviously, when you're in carnage like this, you can't exactly use your normal brake markers sometimes. Here, I can't. Uh, but on the time trial lap, look at that mark on the right -hand side. Through here, stay in third gear, by the way. Don't drop to second at all. Uh, and then as you turn here, shift to fourth, and it will let the car rotate a bit better. And fourth gear, keep the car much more stable. Notice again, I catch up to this Italian very quickly. I back out of this, and I'm going to explain that in a different video. It was a video that was meant to come out yesterday. But more footage of this sort of helps massively uh, as we head towards the last corner. Uh, and as we do that, look at the right hand side. So after you pass the gantry, there's this little weird um, pole thing on the right. Uh, use that as it leaves the screen. That's when you hit the brakes. Uh, I'm going to release the brakes a little bit here because I'm going to try my point and squirt thing again. But you can use that marker and just brake towards the apex. Absolutely not a problem. As we leave that corner, once again, we get a good run out the corner. This time the Italian's had a better run out there. As we head towards turn one, uh, they've definitely got the lead part of uh, this done. So we can't really do much. I do try and look around the outside, but he's got us covered here, really. That is never going to be ours. So he does cover that off very nicely. Well played, Sanfer, uh, as we come into the right hand. We're going to fast forward a little bit here because we're about to witness uh, an overtake, uh, hopefully. Uh, it's going to head in towards the right hander. No, Sanfi goes for the outbreak in here. Unfortunately, he goes straight into Greg. So I'm like, okay, well, let's just keep it tight. Again, point and squirt. Third gear, happy days. Greg loses the rear end. Does catch it just there, but loses that massively just through that outbreaking. Uh, I think I was the Italian that had a back, backed off a little bit here. That was a little bit of error there. Uh, but we get the position all the same. And, uh, you know, we do race clean with the driver. Just uh, unfortunate for Greg there. So you can see Cottonage once again happening up ahead. Very easy to catch up to a group when you're not fighting, and they all are. Um, so here we go then. P9 at the moment. Egbert gets it all sorts of wrong. I go for the inside. Uh, they get a bit of oversteer. I really back out of that as much as I can. And they do survive for now uh, as we continue on through there. So what we are going to witness now, which I thought was going to be last lap. Which is this lap. Uh, witness somebody going to space and the moon. Uh, they're going to challenge Jeff Bezos here. It's Max Range. Look at that flight there in the KTM crossbow. What brilliant suspensions they put on that car. You know, the Austrians doing wonders with the machine there. Uh, lands perfectly and the driver's still alive and no broken back. 
pretty good going, I think. Anyway, you see this French driver up ahead, D Nitro. Um, I think they're a bit of, uh, yeah, well, you're about to see. As you see, they released the brakes there on Egbert. I have no idea why they did that. That was just stupid driving. Um, I was going to go up with something there, but I didn't. And uh, we get a tap from behind that stuff. He made they just misjudged that I was there. And Max Range actually likes me go here. So shout out to you, Max Range. Thank you so much. You don't have to do that. But yeah, the French driver D-Nitro, the minute I saw them release the brakes, and you can go back and watch it again, the minute I knew there's going to be carnage here. You don't just release brakes and go into people like that. So I was very cautious at, at this point. And you can see everybody very close together again. So at this point, I'm just like, mm, okay, yeah, I'll just uh, leave it for now. And you can see a little bit of oversteer there from Egbert. Again, the French driver not really looking that Egbert was on the inside. Uh, I'm looking down the inside here. Uh, they turn across there. I don't know if they were recovering the car a little bit, but we do get a position. We leave just enough space on the left there as we continue on through. But I was very scared at this point. After seeing what happened previously, that I went defensive very early here. I shouldn't have to go defensive here, but I knew they were going to try and outbreak me there. Uh, so they go around the outside and they're going to get lucky here because we just got slowed down so much by the drivers ahead. They go around the outside. So, you know, fair enough. At the end of the day, they did make it work. However, I knew what was going to happen because we saw it on a previous lap. So I was like, okay, that's okay. And I was like, nah, let's, do, let's just forget about this. We know what's going to happen here. So you can see here, once again, a little bit of a punt there. Uh, that got, forces Egbert into a little, whole lot of people quitting there. And now look at the radar, right? This is D-Nitro right on the inside. Oh, the inside out there pushes Quinton into me, forces Egbert off. Again, you're, you're an idiot, mate. I don't care wh who you are. You are a moron and you need to learn to drive this game because you're just being stupid uh, and you have no idea how to race. But uh, yeah, that was just irritating. Uh, Quinton apologized. I was like, I, I could see what was happening on the radar when it went three wide and I knew he'd force people off. Anyway, Egbert obviously got sick of it because he goes for a full-on launch on D-Nitro. Um, does punt him. Unfortunately, JM Bree gets caught in that as well. That is the problem with trying to do revenge. You've got to be so careful of it. However, we're going to cheat now and go inside Egbert and claim the cursed position because, hey, we can cheat apparently and I used my cloaking device, which worked wonders. Uh, you will experience this sort of carnage in this race. I would avoid if I was you. Let's head to race B. Welcome then to the most common combo in existence or very close to it anyway. I might start putting some statistics down here in terms of daily races, but this is Red Bull Ring and Group 3. So I know you've already seen the guide. There will be a guide in this video. Let's have a look at the race details first of all. We're racing five laps here at Red Bull Ring. It's a rolling start, so be careful of the last corner and the penultimate corner, which is the second to last. It's a word I learned off Murray Walker when I was like six years old. Uh, and we are on the racing medium tyres. I went with the Aston Martin then. It was on the leaderboard and it's a very quick car as well, of course. Uh, and the livery this week is done by Mungino once again from Driver's Room. Uh, a lovely looking livery. It really, really is. Let's jump to the race then where you're going to look at it, not from one perspective, but two. Let's go. Here we are then at the start. Look at that Hyundai. We've got a Lamborghini. Uh, another Hyundai. A Porsche, Corvette, Aston Martin, then me. So uh, for those wondering my um, P7, I couldn't decide whether to do qualifying or not. So I decided about three minutes before the race was due to start. I was like, I'll do two laps. And I got P7. Luckily for me, this was probably one of the best decisions that I've made today, actually, in terms of how the day is going. But uh, yeah, let's find out what actually happens here. Uh, race B, normally we're going to a lap guide. I know some of you have seen this 100 times because we've been here so often. Oh, there are some new people to the channel, so, you know, this is for them. Heading towards Turn 1, uh, look for the 100-meter board. Red Bull Ring is famous for just using the 100-meter board everywhere, basically, or pretty much everywhere, as you will see. Uh, so, break slightly early for this. You want to clip the inside of the curb like that, and then I say in third gear in the Aston Martin to stop any wheel spin and, and such. Be careful running too wide on the first corner to sprint race this. If you get a penalty, you're going backwards. You ain't going forwards, and it ruins your day. Anyway, heading towards turn two. You want to break as close as you possibly can to that 100 meter board. Uh, we're breaking a bit early here because we've got slipstream. But obviously, in time trial, you're going to want to break a little bit closer. Uh, I'm hopefully put the brake balance on already. Uh, but if I haven't, I'm going to put it on now, which should be two, I believe, in the Aston Martin. Um, anyway, we're going to continue on out of that corner. And notice again, um, you can do that in first gear. You'll get a bit of steer or second gear. will work. Heading down towards turn three. You're aiming to get as close as you can to the 100 meter board, but this one, you're probably not going to get it. Reason being, it's downhill. You can see it's downhill. This is why people make so many mistakes going down here. Downhill means your braking is increased, irrespective of your speed. Uh, so just be careful of that. I always clip the inside curve if I can. Be careful on exit. You will get that kind of oversteer. 
Continue on then up to this left-hander. Forget the 100 now. We're looking at the 50. 50 is better than the 100, apparently. Uh, try and get as close to that as you can. Uh, and uh, you want to keep it tight. And you want to sort of get your tire on the inside of the curb. Uh, I don't do that here. I don't believe. No, I clip it. Oh, no. I, I, oh, it's close. Uh, but accelerate out. Be careful about going too wide. Don't do that. This is as wide as you want to be. And the next braking marker is when the short circuit joins with a long circuit. Uh, as it joins there, you want to brake. Again, you want to get your tire on the inside of the curb. That will drag you around a little bit. Accelerate through. Be careful of the bugged curb on the right side. Don't use it too much. Uh, continue on towards uh, the final two corners then. So on the left, you have some marshals. They're your best mates. Get as close as you can to them. Give them a high five as you go by. Not too sure, really. But get as close as you can in terms of the braking. Obviously, in slipstream, you've got to back off a little bit like we're doing here. Clip your tyre on the inside curb. Accelerate through as you go down here. Again, downhill braking. But try and get as close to the end of that Austrian flag that I've highlighted there. Um, if you go too deep, you're going to go wide and get a penalty. So it's actually better to break a little bit earlier here where possible. Cut the inside and continue on through the corner. Right, that guide out the way. Time for some racing. Uh, let's get on with it. So we've got Smoke 808 up ahead. We've got uh, Tiflo as well. So into towards turn one we go. Again, third gear. Clip the inside, I bounce the throttle, then I go once it's safe to do so. Smoke 808, unfortunately, ran a bit too wide at turn one. So that is the 0.5 second penalty. Ripperoni to you. Now, in my head, I'm assuming they realized they made a bit of an error and were thinking about it because they dive out the way to hit Tiflo. Unfortunately, they hit max range. Trying to get out the way. Dive left if you uh, outbreak yourself, not right, because you, otherwise you take somebody out like that. So we, by default, get that position. Hey, overtaking by not overtaking. Genius! Anyway, three we go. And uh, in towards the last corner we go. Now you're going to see Tiflo here is going to uh, get a 0.5 penalty. They ran a little bit wide out of the penultimate corner. So I'm going to stay behind me. I don't want to force an issue. And you should really think about this. The penalty line's coming up. Just get as close as you can to them. If you try and overtake before that line, you're going to cost yourself more time than it's worth. Here we go. Penalties get taken. We overtake. We lose literally zero in terms of time. And we continue racing. We catch up to the Lamborghini a few laps later of Gabao. Uh, and we have a really good battle here, actually. Look at my lap times, by the way. They are so consistent. Uh, anyway, in, down here, in towards this right-hander, uh, Gabao, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that completely wrong, uh, gives me some nice, lovely room on the exit. So a huge shout-out to you. Some good, clean racing there. Uh, and we're going to continue to have some good racing as well as that we enter this left-hander then. And uh, yeah, this is some fantastic racing with the Lambo driver, which is always nice to see. But here we are, and they've got a good slipstream. I should have defended. Look at my lap times. Three! That consistent in the point four. Happy days. Uh, so in we go. I saw they went down the inside. They gave me room on the exit as well. Just shout out to you. Superb driving. Gave me room, uh, and we continue racing. But uh, one thing I did spot during this race was that massive gap there between P5 and P6. That is huge for a five-lap race. So I decided, and I mentioned it just before, we're going to look at what actually happened with this. So let's uh, go towards Quinton, who's in the M3 here. Uh, looking down the inside of Jacko then. Uh, not going to quite work, but look at this up ahead. <laughs> it's an Aston Martin train here. Look at this, there's a Porsche in there. Uh, there's just everybody everywhere. And um, yeah, it's all getting very awkward. I mean, look at this. So this is one of those moments where you can see what's going to happen here. Quinton is very clear. Clearly can see it. He's just letting off here. Let everybody cause absolute chaos and just go up the inside. It tries to max range, obviously saw that as well, uh, and just stops in the apex. So actually stops Quinton, but Quinton survived. So, you know, um, you're happy if you're Quinton. Um, so now max range Quinton there side by side with a train of Aston's up ahead here. Being good three, by the way, you pick whatever car you want for this circuit, but more power cars. This is how Quinton realized Smoke 808 broke really early there and actually got out of the way and still managed to stop the car. Beautiful driving from Quinton. Uh, but we expect that from somebody who is making the World Tour Finals. Uh, well, not World Tour Finals, just the finals at the moment. World Series Finals. There we go. Get it out there. Uh, so coming down here, look at this. This is like messy. Uh, so it looked like Smoke turned in on Bananas there. Uh, that's the Red Bull liveried Aston Martin. And then he was off and then that caused somebody to go off. So this is why we just had this huge gap. So then, um, yeah, they get, so they've got dirt on their tyres, which is why they went deep and why they're understeering. So they sort of, you know, I have to slow down. And Quinton with this magnificent set. Look at that. Beautiful driving, Quinton. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, so we carry on here. Obviously, it's not over yet. Uh, let's fast forward this a little bit. So going through this last corner. Uh, yeah, banana badgers. I've, I've just got on the tires. I have no idea what's going on with Max Range and Smoke here. Like, 
Smoke really goes to the right and forces Max Range nearly into the, the barrier. It goes very defensive here. So when someone does that, you know they're going to try and run deep here. Uh, but he survived it, to be fair. Max Range goes for a lovely little cutback uh, and then uh, sort of ran off the road again. I it's, not, it's not good. i got to be honest. It is not good. Quinton, unfortunately, ran wide turn one, so gets a penalty. Uh, but unfortunately for Quinton, uh, his day is about to end in terms of race B as uh, Badgers gets absolutely punted from behind, I believe, reading the chat. And, uh, yeah, gets sent to the realm. Uh, so Quinton not having the best of days there in race B. However, we did. And we finished in a lovely P3 here. We have a good race. Some people had a bad race. I think that's what you get from Red Bull Ring consistently. You either get a good race or a bad race. It's never normally in the middle. Uh, but that is going to be it for race B. We're going to head to race C now, which is uh, something a little bit different for a change. Welcome to Bathurst then. And the difference, as you can see, it's at night, which is pretty cool. We haven't had many night races. Uh, I will discuss the little cheats you can do in a little bit, of course. Um, but let's have a look at the race details. We're racing eight laps here at Bathurst. Uh, it's a rolling start, so just be careful if you are near the back. Obviously, you've got to do that last corner. Uh, we are only on the racing hard tires, which means no strategy. Thank you. Uh, and fuel usage times two and tire wear times six. It literally feels like when I made this graphic, they just went, we needed a race C. Delete six. Put eight in. Job done. And I'm pretty sure that's what they did. Uh, however, it's nice that they did pick Bathurst at night. So it's not all that's lost. Now, in the background, you can see I chose the Atenza. Uh, I only chose the Atenza because Psycho Killer 69 uh, did a beautiful livery for it. Otherwise, I would not have picked the Atenza in a month of Sundays because it doesn't suit me at all in the slightest, as you will see in the race. Let's jump to the race then uh, and let's have a look exactly what happened um, as uh, Quinton decides he wants to show everybody up, to be honest with you. Right, here we are then. I'm going to show you the cheat first of all. So I have explained this before, but go to your options and go to detail settings and go all the way to video settings and change the exposure. And now you've got a daylight race. So we can see our famous tree that we use at the last corner. I'm going to put it back to zero personally, uh, but you can see how it differs even at one there. You can see it much better. Obviously, it depends on the brightness of your monitor as well and your lighting, but adjust that if you want, if you want to win, basically. But if you want to just enjoy the darkness, put it on normal. Right, here we go then with the start. Now, group four, Quinton, uh, well, the R4M driver, I was going to call him a pleb then, but obviously not in this situation, uh, has put the uh, Bugatti Veyron on P1 on the time trial board. So obviously Quinton's going to be rapid here anyway, uh, but it's not often you see the Veyron top at uh, Bathurst, to be honest with you. So yeah, shout out to Quinton, putting something new at the top. Always nice to see, to be honest with you. I say I'm in the Tenza, which... Uh, I only picked because of the livery, to be honest with you. Uh, how I regret that after the race, because I was always tempted with the Ferrari. It's one of my go-to Group 4 cars at the moment. I think it's a nice car to use, if I'm honest, the Ferrari. Um, so I probably will go with that in the future. But up ahead, Veyron's already broken away from me, so I have no slipstream. Ripperoni. Um, but up ahead, you've got a, a Megane and also a, a Tenza. Doing that from memory. How good's that? Uh, so you got an Atenza up ahead. So Quinton looking for a way through already. Atenza stuck on the outside here. Going to lose that position to Quinton. And uh, yeah, we're going to get involved in the thick of the action right here. In fact, I'm going to show you how bad the lighting can be uh, when you're on bumper cam here. So going through here then. Uh, and we're coming into the first breaking zone. Look how dark it gets when you're that close. It is very, very scary. Uh, so at this moment, I've gone to the outside. Now, I can't fully see the rear quarter of that car. So uh, unfortunately, there's just little taps there. There's nothing major between me and Shoot Games. You know, it's all golden. In fact, you'll see how good uh, of a clean driver Shoot Games is, actually, in a second. As you see, we've got Carnage here um, at the very fast left-hander, the chase. Uh, and uh, Shoot Games going to go towards the left here. The Shiraco, Aguirre, just comes towards the left at the very last second there. And Shoot Games hits him. Now, Shoot Games looks, he's like, oh, I need to give this position back. Breaks and realizes he's got cars everywhere. M waits till after the corner and then moves over. So a shout out to you. That's awesome sportsman-like conduct. Uh, that's the kind of thing you need to do. You, you're away, so like, oh, I can't give it back yet. I'll just wait a little bit and then give it back. Just superb. All right, we've got Badgers in front of us. So we're looking around the outside of Badgers at this corner. Not going to work. I think I could try and go for a cutback, but Badgers stops it beautifully. So uh, yeah, there goes that one. And I wouldn't really recommend too wide up here, personally. Normally it ends in a crash. Uh, and obviously you don't want to be in a crash, I guess. So uh, yeah, I'd avoid it. As you see, the... I don't know what that was behind me. Something hit me anyway, but uh, we survive and continue on all the same. Uh, let's see what we can do going up and over the mountain. So, uh, can we get past badges? It's very hard to overtake on the mountain, to be honest with you. 
Which is why also the very one that Quinton's in is actually a good shout because it's got a lot. It's got high end speed. You've seen my fastest group four video. In fact, I'm going to put that at the end of the video. Uh, and you can have a look at the fastest group four cars because down the street he just overtakes people. So I do look down the inside here. Not really worth it. Again, it's not a corner I would risk going too wide. It'll just cause a huge crash. Um, so we just have to wait for now. We've got Jacko up ahead as well in that McGann. Uh, is that Shelty in disguise? I don't know. But whoa, 1.5 second penalty there. That's huge in terms of penalties at this circuit, especially when he has to take it on this straight. Ripperoni to Jacko. Uh, well, let's uh, see what we can do versus Badgers. Because obviously we're going to have a really good run on Badgers. And Badgers is not going to have any slipstream, is he? So uh, there we go. That's that penalty. Absolutely destroyed on the straight. Jacko going all the way to the back, basically. Uh, but Badgers got a good run out of that last corner. So if we look here. Now, this corner, very tricky to do in the dark when you can't see anything. I've got to be honest. I do put a marker out. I've realized what the marker is eventually. But Badgers keeps that position. And then we look down the inside. Very late maneuver. We do hit the apex. So I would argue a clean move. It's a dive, but a clean dive in my opinion. And we get it done. But Badgers, uh, lucky for them, it gets a lovely little push by the German driver, I believe it was. Uh, and managed to get past. Beautiful little comeback drive there from Badgers. Gets it done, and we're going to stay side by side for some racing action. And we're going to go into a lap guide as well. So heading towards turn one then, we're going to look for our famous photographer on the right-hand side. And there he is. But he's in green. Obviously, he brightens up when your headlights are on him. Obviously, at this angle, a little less so. Very obvious to use. You're braking just before that. Uh, and then you should just be able to turn in at the lamppost. Obviously, we're right next to another driver, so we've got to take this very tight. But even so, Badgers gets that done. And you've got a brake marker there for turn one. Hey, everyone's a winner, eh? Uh, everyone's a winner, baby. No, well, let's not do that. Uh, so heading towards <laughs> turn two then. Uh, same market I always point out here. We go over the crest of the hill. Uh, seven attempts down. Just use the action we've been in. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have this piece of tarmac. So you can have use a start, middle, end. Just pick somewhere in that tarmac area uh, and break. It depends on your car, obviously, because if you're in a good car that can break for days, uh, you can break right at the end of it. You want to stay tight here. If you're even on this line, the car will just understeer out. If you're on the inside, there's a bit more camber there. It helps the car get round. It's nice. Uh, and as you come through here, I'm going to point out here. You notice how it straightens up there. There's a little bit of a straight bit. When you see that and get to that point, that's when you hammer on the anchors. You see badges just gone the anchors, okay? Um, and when I say anchors, I mean brakes, by the way, if you're a bit unsure. So yeah, full on, 100% braking. Badges, unfortunately, goes into the barrier there. We leave just enough room on the outside. And as we go up here... The tree on the right side is your turn in tree. I point this out a lot. Um, basically, it's your best mate. And you can see it on zero exposure increase, uh, apparently. So, yeah, use it. It's there for you to use. So, this is all flat in the Atenza. Might not be in your car of choice. Just be careful. Lifting does help. Uh, as we come through here, I lift a little bit because I just get the curve slightly wrong. But as we hit here, sort of, I think this is Skyline. Don't quote me on that. Uh, just before the end of the curve, lift off the throttle. It bounces the weight of the car. The car becomes settled, and as you come over here, you won't get crazy jumps or understeers. Now, I try and accelerate a little bit too early, run a little bit wide, but the tender's fine. It doesn't really spin. Now, you're going to brake just before the Audi R8 sign. I've highlighted that there, where the barrier is. You're aiming for that. You'll understeer away from that, but I'm aiming for that. And notice how beautifully we do that. And you're braking. Every time you go straight, you brake 100%. When you're not straight, you brake like 50%, because your tyres can only do so much. Now, the curb on the right hand side, uh, at the end of that curb is when you want to turn in for this. Usually I just do this by vision. Sometimes I use that, but here I was just using, like, just looking ahead and knowing when to do it, basically. You'll get the hang of it. Now, as we come through here, I've just stopped the camera here. You're going to lift off. You want to get as far right as possible. As you turn, you can only break 100% when you're straight. Remember, you're in downhill as well, so any bit of wrongdoing, your brake is going to increase. So, you notice how I got straight and then I braked 100%. I'm in the wrong gear, which doesn't help anyone. I, you actually do that in second in the Atenza. Um, but even so, that's how you break coming down the hill and now we're going to continue on all the way to my little marker now a marker we do not use it very often but because it's dark here at Bathurst we actually have to use it get some visual identification of when the corner's coming up so as you head down this little bit you'll notice the Marshall box there on the right side it's right on the inside of the corner at that point you know you've got to turn in turn in just after it so you're aiming just for the grass really and we can turn in there and then we're going to use the uh, sig nevent i'm going to start saying that again uh, the v in that sign uh, just after the 150 meter board that's your brake marker uh works for most cars uh you don't have to break a little bit early in some cars i just get a little bit wrong there nothing major but uh, the attendant likes to understeer a bit i didn't really have any rotation to be honest with you i'm gonna to head towards the last corner now so if you're cheating I'm going to point out the cheat marker, which is the tree on the right hand side, which you can hardly see. 
with my highlighted because I'm on the pitch black. Or, as I started using just before the lamppost here on the right hand side, uh, you can break there as well. Remember, Bathurst is actually an open public road at some points of the year. You're actually racing by houses on there, so that's why they exist. Little fact for you there. All right, we're going to head down here. We've caught up to El Country, who actually had an off at Skyline. Um, so we've caught up to them. And uh, let's see what we can do here. So we're going to have some racing action. We like racing action. It's why we play racing games, as far as I'm aware. Um, so the Ferrari's got good pace, as you can see here. We're not really catching. Uh, so I really do wish I picked the Ferrari, to be honest with you. Damn you, Psycho Killer, with your good liveries. Anyway, heading in towards this breaking zone. Not really alongside. Couldn't really go in for the dive there. I'd have just hit the Spaniard to Narnia, to be honest. Don't know whether he wants to go or not. Uh, let me know. I don't know. Uh, anyway, we're going to advance a bit further on here. You can see a fight up ahead for P8 as well between Blue Thunder and uh, Fessit. Uh, oh, El Country just hits a barrier there. That's a very common thing to do, by the way, hitting barriers here. Just because the lighting goes a bit weird sometimes, uh, you might just miss it. So they come back across here. A bit, little bit better acceleration. I might even be changing gear wrong in the intensive, actually. I don't drive it very often. We're going to come down the hill now. And this is where we're going to have a bit more carnage, of course. Uh, so Blue Thunder gets it all sorts of wrong here. So it hits the barrier. That forces GTR into the barrier. We go left. So at this point, I, I believe it's two by two here. Unfortunately, the Spaniard just pushes his way through here. And at this point, I'm sort of like, I'm a sitting duck. I can't really do much, to be honest. Um, so yeah, it's just, I was a bit frustrated. I flashed my light second. I'm like, why make it three wide? Just keep it two wide. It's two by two. I mean, he benefits from it, obviously. But yeah, it was just a bit frustrating, to be honest. But racing is racing, I guess. So we're going to continue on here. Blue Thunder goes off. And I decided I wanted to follow and then realized I didn't. So yeah half go off uh, but we get that position from blue thunder so up into p10 and uh yeah well, it's not too bad so we're gonna advance a bit further on now uh, it's the penultimate lap we're gonna use that for days if you're wondering where i got the word penultimate from i think i've already mentioned it murray walker f196 he always used to say penultimate i learned that when i was like six or seven years old country uh gets a penalty there uh, and unfortunately forces fess it into the barrier there. that's uh, not the greatest uh, of things maybe you're just a bit hassled by the penalty we look down the inside of Fessit here. Uh, we do get alongside. Unfortunately, it just turns into me here. And then keeps turning into me. So I, uh, I'm about to push back here. And just be like, no, mate. Don't do that. Um, so we're going to get past. And then I flash. This is just like, no, I wasn't happy with that. But the nice thing was, Fessit backs on the hazard. So at that point, I'm like, okay. You know, any mistake. It's all good. Let's continue on racing now. We can have a good fast, uh, final lap. Bit to the braking zone then. And unfortunately, they get it a bit wrong. So we go, okay. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much. Sorry if you thought I was going to punt you. I wasn't going to punt you. You put your hazards on. I was like, all right, no no worries. Happy days. Continue racing. So last lap, the chase. We have a Ferrari, uh, which is going the speed of sound at the moment as it comes up behind us here. If I stay to the left here, maybe you didn't expect that. Uh, and as we go into the braking zone, oh, we get it stopped nicely. Hopefully, oh, yes, we do. We get it stopped beautifully there. Beautiful bit of defensive driving. We're going to head towards the last corner now. Uh, and I'm going to be a pleb. You like me being a pleb, don't you? Here you go. Uh, so I head towards the last corner then. I decide that I want to try and outbreak myself for reasons I'm not aware of. Uh, and the Ferrari goes, oh, hello. We can have you here. And it's got good acceleration, of course. I let go of my steering wheel now. And then I'm on the grass as well just to help El Country try and get that P7. Unfortunately, doesn't do it. But Quinton, look at Quinton. He's 22 seconds ahead of me here. Absolute madman in that Veyron. But well played. Looks like the FF cars work here as well if you want to use an FF car. Really would have been nice if we had a bit of strategy for this one. I think that would have really made this... Perfect, but even so, quite an all right race. So you can have some good racing there as well. That's it for me this week, folks. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to stay in touch with all the content. We do this every single week, all sorts of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, there's two videos there for you, including the fastest group four and then another video of YouTube's choosing. But that's it for me. Once again, thank you. Au revoir, farewell, and have a good week of racing.